Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're giving you our list of the 10 hardest Spider-Man games. For as much as we love some of the Webhead's games like Shattered Dimensions or the 2018 game from Insomniac, there have been a handful of games where we wished that train had taken him out. Which Spider-Man game had you frustrated the most? Did it make our list? Let us know down in the comments. Don't know where you think you're going. I was just gonna see if they had any more of those Empire State Building snow globes. Hey, do you want one? <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content all week long. So, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Ultimate Spider-Man, the GBA version. Let's get one thing straight, there isn't much reason to play this already, what with the console version being a more fun romp. But the Game Boy Advance version? Well, if you, for some reason, need a game that is unreasonably hard, then go for it, we suppose. Critics and players have shared similar sentiments in how the game's difficulty seems to be all over the place, with some segments being aggravating and others just being downright unfair. Hopefully you had other Spidey games to play and weren't stuck just playing this, if you were one of those kids, well, we feel sorry for you. The Amazing Spider-Man Yeah, don't be surprised when you see more old Spidey games pop up throughout the rest of the video. For some reason, many developers were making Spider-Man games like they were trying to make Ninja Gaiden, or, or in this case, the next E.T. Hey, this Spidey game was made by Atari, why wouldn't it have awkward controls and unbalanced gameplay? At this point, it was basically the company's calling card, and not in a flattering way. But what's worse is how this game is built entirely on puzzles, and yet it does not utilize any of the webhead's powers in any capacity. Just web swinging? Seriously? This was the best you could do, Atari. What are we saying? This is a game from Atari. Of course it was the best they could do. Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin Looks like it's time to call on your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. <laughs> Why look for arguments to enrage yourself on social media when you can just play Spider-Man vs. The Kingpin? Honestly, there is nothing but total nonsense happening in this game. Vs. The Kingpin has gone down as one of Spidey's most infamous outings on account of the ridiculous difficulty, which is ever so present even when on the easy setting. Kingpin? What do you suppose he's up to now? Whatever it is, it's bound to be bad news for New York. One reviewer at the time of this game's launch even noted about how they couldn't figure out a way to get past the guard dogs, dying with every different attempt and getting nowhere. Why did it have to be like this, man? Why? Good work, Spider-Man. It's a good thing you came along when you did. You're the best friend this city ever had. I'm just glad you're on our side. Spider-Man Battle for New York. Loser! Parker. Ah! Mr. Osborne, please, sir, calm down! There are very few superhero games who wouldn't need a complex combat system, let alone a working one. Spidey is not one of those. Battle for New York is a blight in how the game itself feels like it's fighting the player every step of the way. Regardless of how fast or slow you're pushing buttons in whatever order, it feels next to impossible to pull off any of Spider-Man's moves. Just what was the point in making combat like this when it doesn't even work? <sighs> this can't be how Captain America does it. The Amazing Spider-Man 2 I'll never stop looking for Uncle Ben's killer. What else would you expect from a game based on such a horrid movie? We can rail on this game for the mundane combat and the lack of focus, but the real reason why it's hard is because of the abysmal frame rate. We aren't saying that like it hurts our eyes or whatever. It does, but that's not the main reason. Impressive, but you are still raw, inexperienced. 
the technical performance really does screw up gameplay even when you aren't doing anything. Button prompts may not register because a few frames skipped, or you'll screw up a jump because the game froze at the wrong time. We highly doubt many players kept the game, let alone beat it. Man, I was in the zone! Hey, unconscious bad guy, was I in the zone or what? Spider-Man Return of the Sinister Six. Man, a game with the title Return of the Sinister Six should have been incredibly fun to play. Not in this timeline, though. Return of the Sinister Six has some of the most awkwardly awful controls you would expect a Spidey game to have. For a frame of reference, you might need quite a bit of time just to get some bearing on web shooting, one of the most basic mechanics of the game. The NES had better games than this, and it was also dead in 1992, so why was anybody picking up this game? Spider-Man. Whenever you're in a shadowed spot like that, you become invisible to the bad guys. <laughs> we will always love the games based on the Sam Raimi movies, but we gotta be honest about the first one. It's pretty damn hard. First of all, the controls aren't as smooth as they could have been, but what has our thyroids pulsating is the combat. The Ozbots can rot, and just to make the game somewhat manageable, you will have to go out of your way to do the side missions just to unlock the better, more damaging combos. We're just glad these problems were somewhat avoided in Spider-Man 2. Maybe I should get some kind of spider signal so people don't have to set things on fire to get my attention. Spider-Man and the X-Men in Arcade's Revenge. What sort of magical concoction of awfulness did Arcade's Revenge cook up to forever live in infamy? Well folks, it was a bad combination of imprecise shooting, awful controls, and the fact that the very first level of the game is an overly long, irritating labyrinth. And if, for whatever reason, you still want to give this game a go, and do so without some kind of strategy guide next to you, 66 GameFAQs users reported the game lies somewhere between tough and unforgiving. To think that some folks praised this level of asinine design back in the day is just mind-boggling. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 Enter Electro I can see my house from here. Enter Electro had the unfortunate circumstance in sort of inheriting the first game's problems. Crawling was still pretty cumbersome and could result in some unfair deaths or combat we really didn't want to deal with just yet. But the biggest problem was some of the boss fights, most notably the fights against Shocker and Lizard. If any of you played Enter Electro in kid mode, we promise you, there's no shame to be had. Playing the game on a difficulty higher than that is just ramming your head into a wall. I believe that's all the time we have for today. I think we made some real progress today, Shocker. I really do. Venom slash Spider-Man Separation Anxiety. Separation Anxiety is one of the most unfair games to ever exist on this damn planet. If you played the predecessor, Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage, you'd expect the sequel to have a similar level of difficulty, if not just a tiny bit higher. <laughs> not at all, sport. Separation Anxiety went way overboard in outdoing its older brother. Enemies have ridiculous hitboxes, so ridiculous that it would infuriate a wannabe competitive Smash player, and Spidey and Venom are given almost no tools to counter them. You will die in some of the dumbest ways imaginable here. Just avoid it at all costs. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Mojo Plays, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.